What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and happy 2020. This is the first real video that I've done since the new year and I'm excited about talking about what is in store for the electric vehicle market for this year. You know, for many, many years, automakers have been saying 2020 is going to be the year. 2020 is going to be the year that we're going to come out with our best electric vehicle, the Tesla killer, whatever it's called. This is the year, and we've got quite a few electric vehicles that are going to be coming out this year. Many of them I've talked about in previous videos, but I want to do sort of like a summary video of six cars that I am most excited about this year. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first one that I want to talk about is the Ford Mach-E. Ford introduced this vehicle around the LA Auto Show, and I got a chance to take a look at it. I wasn't there at the actual product reveal, but I did get a chance to go to the LA Auto Show, sit in the vehicle, touch the touch screen, feel the materials, look in the front and the trunk, and overall, I actually really like this vehicle. It's got a relatively approachable design. It doesn't look strange, in my opinion, like maybe the, the Nissan Leaf or the Chevy Bolt does. It's got a little bit more of a, a broad-reaching design. It's more acceptable, you know, when I was in high school, I used to be a very big Ford Mustang fan, always wanted one, and so there was a little bit of that familiarity to me uh, in regards to the design. I think that it has some elements and design cues from the what we all know as the Ford Mustang, the two-door sport coupe, but uh, it's its own rendition. It's its own four-door SUV, and Ford has never made a, a, a four-door Ford Mustang, and so that I think is pretty avant-garde. The other thing that I think is really interesting, and, and, and uh, it's a huge risk on Ford's part, they've created a Ford SUV. They've never done this either, and so they're taking some big leaps and risks here. I admire that. It's a very bold risk, but I think this is one of the things that Ford has to really consider if they want to attract the younger crowds, if they want to continue to be relevant over time, and electrification plus Finding ways to integrate tech into vehicles are going to be two ways that they do that. Now, in terms of the range of this, you've got several different variants ranging from 210 miles to 300 miles. The way that they've worded this on their website makes me think that they're going to be able to do better than that. But I'm going to hold my breath because it seems like automakers who come out with EVs have really overpromised and underdelivered, uh, like for example, the Porsche Taycan. In terms of the price point, we're looking at a starting price of forty-four thousand dollars, and you know this isn't this isn't high end, but this isn't low end. This is somewhere in the middle, and of course, if you factor in the uh, lack of operational costs, the lack of fuel, the lack of oil changes, this becomes a very appealing forty-four thousand dollars. What about the tech? I did have a chance to get into the car at the LA Auto Show, as I mentioned before, and play around with the touchscreen, and it wasn't that impressive, but I'm going to give them a little bit of a pass on this because this car they just finished developing, and this was a prototype, and so I think that they've got the beginnings of something very nice and appealing, uh, but they do need to work on this before they start to put it into production about a year from now. Overall, I really like the approachable design of this Mach-E. I think that it is sort of middle of the road. It's not so super forward thinking like maybe the Cybertruck might be, but it's not so conservative in terms of electric vehicles like a Nissan Leaf. I just think that the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Bolt are quite forgettable. There's nothing really remarkable about it. And of course, as, as we, all, we all probably saw when Tesla announced or released the Cybertruck, Everyone was talking about it, whether people liked it or not. Uh, people were very, very chatty about their opinions about the Cybertruck. And so I think for this Ford Mach-E, this, this, this is sort of middle of the road in terms of design approach. I think it's acceptable, and I think it'll appeal to a broad market, especially if they're introducing the Mach-E initially to Europe and Chinese markets before they introduce it to North American markets. The next one up is the Rivian R1T and R1S. I've had a good chance to get to know these guys and guys and gals, and I really like their product. I like I like where they're headed. I like the the culture that they're developing around this brand. It's not just a car, but it's also designed to be this sort of 
outdoor adventure vehicle that gets you into the, into the outdoors to experience all that nature has to offer. So in terms of range, we're looking at between a 230 and 400 mile range, depending on the variant. Price point will start out at $69,000, and this is one that I'm, I'm looking forward to the quality of the car. I know that the quality of the car is going to be great, but in particular, the pickup truck. After Tesla revealed their Cybertruck, it made me really, uh, not necessarily really concerned, but I'm just curious to know how the market is going to adjust and receive these two totally different pickup trucks, of course. These trucks look completely different. And where my concern lies, and maybe concern is a, is a little bit of a stretch, but where my interest lies is how are consumers going to embrace the R1T versus the Cybertruck? I realize that the Cybertruck is pretty far out there in terms of design. The R1T looks like a pickup truck. It's very similar to what we're used to in terms of design and style, minus maybe a couple of things like the shorter bed and the, the carabiner style headlights or the stadium headlights as they call them. But I'm really curious to see how consumers embrace these fully electric vehicles from companies that only make electric vehicles. Now, from what I've seen so far with Rivian's tech, I'm pretty impressed with what they've got. I have had a chance to sit down inside of the vehicle and play around with the touch screen. And in terms of software prowess, it does remind me a lot of what Tesla is doing in their vehicles right now. So I have a lot of hope for Rivian in that they'll be able to create the seamless experience that is far greater than what most people are used to with traditional cars where software is really an afterthought for traditional automakers. My overall thought of this vehicle is I really like this culture that they're creating of getting into the outdoors. You know, I live here in Colorado and I am one who is able to appreciate the outdoors, getting into the mountains, getting hiking and skiing and snowboarding and fishing and so on. And so this is a type of vehicle that I think will be very capable and will be something that I would really appreciate and enjoy knowing that they've created this vehicle to help get people into to the outdoors. One of the other things that I really enjoy about this is the attention to detail. As I've mentioned before, I've had a chance to sit down with the team and talk with them one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm just incredibly impressed about the thought process behind the particular materials that they use to make sure that they're the right things for the right use for the vehicles or use cases for the vehicles. I also really love the, the detail that they've put into things like the flashlight that they've put into the door of the vehicle using one of their cylindrical batteries to power this flashlight. I also really appreciate the luggage tunnel door that comes down that you can sit on maybe to put your shoes or gear on or you can even stand on it to get onto the top rack of the car, the top roof of the car. And, and so some of these approaches I'm really impressed with. I can tell that they've put a lot of time into creating a vehicle that addresses people's needs and leaves a little bit of surprise to those that will purchase these vehicles. The VW ID3 is the next one on my list that I'm excited about in 2020. It looks pretty good. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the Golf, the VW Golf and the E-Golf. And I know that that vehicle is very, very popular, especially in Europe. So I think this one is going to sell very, very well. Its range from what they've said at their product launch is going to be between 205 and 340 miles. Now, take that with a grain of salt because these are WLTP estimates and EPA estimates always come in a bit lower. So I would guess that on the low end, we're probably looking at somewhere under 200 miles. And for the high end, you're probably looking at just under 300 miles for EPA range. And that's if they bring this vehicle to North America. They have expressed the intent of focusing on the European and Chinese markets first. So we'll see how that goes, but it does look like a really, really good car. What about price point? This one's gonna come in just under 30,000 euro or just under 33,000 US dollars, which I really, really love. I think there needs to be more cars in this 30 to 40,000 dollar price point for people to embrace electric vehicles. They can be really great. Electric vehicles can do a lot of really fantastic things. They can be fun to drive, but if they're not affordable to people, then people are not going to buy them. So affordability, I think, is really key, and I think the ID3 will address that component. What are my overall thoughts about this vehicle? Well, 
Again, just like the Mach-E, I think that it's sort of a middle-of-the-road design. It's not too far avant-garde, but not too conservative. I think a lot of people will feel very free to embrace this, assuming that the price points can be somewhere in between that thirty dollars and $40,000 range. The next one up is a Polestar 2, and though this is one that doesn't appeal to my personal design approach, I'm incredibly excited about. The size of it, I think, is going to appeal to a very, very broad market, and in terms of the range, it does look very, very promising. Uh, again, these are WLTP estimates, and they're going to come in at somewhere between 250 and 275 miles of range. I'd guess that if we're looking at EPA range, we're probably looking at somewhere between you know low 200 mile to maybe 250 mile at the top end. This is going to be a pretty okay competitor for some of the variants of the Model 3. Now, I get what some of you are thinking. No, it doesn't have the supercharging network. No, it doesn't have autopilot, but not everyone wants and needs those things. And I think that the overall product or package or offering that Polestar is offering, this Polestar 2 is going to be very great, especially for a starting price of $45,000. In terms of the tech, I really like the approach that Polestar has taken with this vehicle. It's going to incorporate a fully integrated Android Auto with Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store. And this is the first vehicle that I know of that's fully integrating Google into a vehicle. So I'm exceptionally excited about this one. I think that it's going to offer the owner, the driver, the people in the vehicle, a very nice seamless in-car experience. This car is going to be in line with what Volvo offers with their XC40. So it's not a full-size sedan. I guess it would be considered a compact four-door sedan. And I think it's going to address a lot of the major markets around the globe. Uh, in terms of the U.S., uh, it looks like they are starting off with some markets here in the U.S. as well as Europe and China. And so we should see these on the road very, very soon. My understanding is, and I'm not sure if they've updated this timeline, but they're supposed to start production in February of 2020, which is next month. So this one is really, really exciting. I've always appreciated and admired Volvo's approach to simplicity, to that minimalist approach, and Polestar 2 is no exception. Okay, on to the ones that you've all been waiting for. Model Y is the next vehicle in my list of vehicles that I'm looking forward to in 2020. And this is probably the one that I'm most excited about. Not because I'm a Tesla owner, or not because I'm involved in the Tesla community, but because I think that it has the best offering when you look at the total package. In terms of range, we're looking at between 230 and 300 miles of range. It's got a starting price of $39,000 at that standard range. Now keep in mind, they're not gonna introduce a standard range until 2021, I think, that they, they may move that up if they bump up the uh, uh, production timeline for Model Y to sometime earlier this year. But nonetheless, it's going to start off at $39,000. And in terms of the tech, it's going to be very familiar to what we are all used to with Tesla vehicles. In fact, it's going to be very similar to the Model 3 because they have that same horizontal touch screen that I think they're quite honest, moving to for all of their other cars as well, including the Model S and X. We already saw the Cybertruck has that horizontal screen, so it makes sense that they're moving all vehicles, but that's just an aside. With this Model Y, I think it's going to feel very similar to the Model 3 because it shares 75% of the same parts. So I don't think there's gonna be any surprises there in terms of tech. In terms of design, it looks like a larger, taller, thicker version of a Model 3. But I do think it's going to address that compact SUV market, which is, of course, super hot in North America. My understanding is that it's pretty hot in Europe as well as China. This one is going to sell even better than the Model 3, I expect, and I can't wait for Tesla to start producing this. The next one on my list is the Model S Plaid, and we don't know a whole lot of information about this vehicle, but nonetheless, it's going to be really exciting to see, I think, because Tesla hasn't really done any major updates to S or X in a long time. These things are gonna be speculations, so just take these things that I'm talking about with a grain of salt. But I'm gonna say that Tesla's gonna come out with a 400 mile range Model S with this Plaid tri-motor. You know, 
Tesla did do a minor update to the drivetrain back in May of 2019 where they swapped out the induction motor in the front of the Model S and they put in a permanent magnet motor and made it more efficient. They also updated the suspension and made the ride more smooth, but I'm expecting this Plaid update, this is going to be a performance vehicle, mind you, but I'm expecting this to be the best of the best because they just haven't done any updates and the sales of Model S and X have not been what they used to be in previous years. And so I think doing something like this where they push that range above 400 miles, they increase the performance ability, they increase the battery pack, the battery pack management, and they really make this something that can not only go further but perform far better than anything else on the electric vehicle market. I'm excited about this. I think that this is going to be a really, really great update for Tesla and who knows, they may even update the interior to that horizontal screen, they may update the HVAC, and it may look a little bit more Model 3-esque. So we'll see, but I'm really hoping that Tesla takes some of that Maxwell technology and implements it into this. It makes a lot of sense to me that they would introduce some of that new higher price technology into their highest margin vehicles in S and X. And uh, Tesla hasn't mentioned anything about an update, a Plaid update for the X, but I'm just thinking that if they're gonna make an update to the S, makes sense maybe to make an update to the X as well, but that may not be the case. Nonetheless, we know for sure that they've been testing out this Plaid drivetrain for the Model S on the Nuremberg Ring and um, I can't wait to see it. And I really think that it's going to be more than just an increase of zero to 60 in horsepower. I think there's gonna be some additional range there. And uh, there's a part of me that says that Elon Musk wants to really put an emphasis on their Model S performance variant being better than the Porsche Taycan. So we'll, we'll see, but um, this is going to be an exciting tit for tat competition between Tesla and Porsche. So in summary, 2020 is going to be a really fun year for the electric vehicle market. There's a lot of things to look forward to and not just the six vehicles that I've mentioned, but there's some other ones that will be coming out as well that I didn't go into detail about like the Fisker Emotion and the Byton M-Byte. Those are a couple other ones that are on my radar. And then I know a lot of people are looking forward to Tesla's Battery and Powertrain Investor Day where they should reveal some really, really fun and new technology that will push the entire electric vehicle industry forward. I wanna give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thanks for believing in me and throwing some change my way. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, hit the like button and I'll catch everyone on the next video.